again. And we're going to do some really cool stuff. We're going to finish our form. Now, we've already got our numbers from the fields turned, or our text from the fields turned into numbers that we can actually start doing math operations with. And the next thing we want to do is actually perform the, um, the algorithm to basically do x is what percent of y, okay? So how do we do that? Well, this is the simplest of all percentage formulas. And so we can say var result equals x divided by y. So the first thing you do when working with percentages, and this is not a coding thing, this is just math in general, uh, is we say x is divided by y. That's the first step that you do, okay? And then you need to turn that into a percentage. So the first thing it's gonna do is convert it into a decimal like so here, and then we need to um, get the actual percentage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say var percent equals result times 100. Okay, okay, that sounds pretty good here. So let's make sure our math is correct. We're gonna say alert and we're gonna say percent. Now, if you're wondering, Mark, I don't understand. How come I have to convert strings into numbers using parse float, but when I just put numbers here into like alerts and consoles, it just works, it prints. Well, that's because alert and console.log will actually turn your uh, numbers into a string for you automatically, uh, which is really cool. So it handles all that underneath the hood. You don't ever have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and make sure this works. So we before we did 200 is what percent of 5,000 and we got 4%. So we should see the same thing here on our website if I put the same numbers in. So if I said uh, 200 and 5,000, our alert pops up and says four, 4%, it's correct. I think our math is good here, okay? So the last thing we need to do is actually show it in our code. So let's do that now. We're gonna say, uh, where is our results field? Result field dot inner text, we talked about this before, equals the answer, okay, or result, whatever, plus percent plus percent, okay? If that's confusing at all, this is just the word answer plus the actual value, so that would be a four in that case, you know, plus the percent sign at the end, all right? And so let's see if that actually works. So let's refresh the page. Yeah, I said result here before, but it's supposed to be answer. And so let's go ahead and say 200 is what percent of 5,000? I click calculate. And what just happened? Hold on. I saw it there for a millisecond, but then it disappeared again. What is going on? Well, this is something very important to know, and this is going to frustrate a lot of new programmers. So be, be glad you heard it first from me. Whenever you do, uh, whenever you do in HTML a form submit, okay, if you have this form here and you do a submit just the way we did, okay, using this add event listener, every time you do that, it is going to refresh your page and wipe all your data off of it. That is the default behavior for a form submission. And if you're thinking, well, that's dumb, well, not really, think about it. When you go to a website and you log in, okay, you know, it, it's gonna refresh the page or take you to another page. Like, there's, it's not typical that you leave uh, all the data on in a page. You're supposed to do something, and that's just the default behavior. Does it mean it should be that way? No. If your website doesn't call for it, you need to turn that function off, or that feature off. So that's what we need to do. We need to turn that feature off so our data stays there. Okay, so the one thing we're gonna do is here in function, we're gonna add something called event. You could call this whatever you want, E for event or blah, but of course event is more descriptive and uh, you wanna do descriptive variables here. But basically, whenever an event listener calls the callback function, which you've put here, it is gonna pass in the event, okay? Whatever event that may be, this is a submission event. And all we need to do is turn off the default behavior. So event dot prevent default. So what's gonna happen here is we're gonna say, hey, Mr. Submission, my event, don't, ref don't refresh the page. We just calculated it, showed it on the screen. Please don't refresh the page. Just leave it alone. And we're gonna stop that behavior. And there's uh, lots of different um, events and um, things in HTML actually have default behavior that you can turn off by doing prevent default. And that's what we need to do. And is this proper behavior? Yes, it is. This, you will write this all the time in your code uh, when working with forms. Now, if we had worked with just a button, okay, and it wasn't inside a form, we would not use submit, we would use an on-click listener and we would not have this problem. But forms will reset your page because that's the default behavior. And we are now stopping it with prevent default by, pass by allowing the event to be passed here into the function, okay? You with me so far? So 
what I want to do is I want to take off this temp temporary text I had in here that said result. And I'll make sure both these are saved. And now what we're going to do is refresh the page. And I'm going to say x is what percent of y? So five or 200 is what percent of 5,000? OK, we're going to calculate it. And the answer is 4%. So we just wrote our very own percentage calculator. And it's not dissimilar to theirs. I mean, this website's not even that pretty, so we're not that far off. So 200 is what percent of 5,000? Answer is 4%. And we could, of course, done this too, like showed all the steps and printed it out if we wanted to. Um, but this is pretty cool, right? We actually just built a real function uh, on a website that's highly popular. Lots of people go to this website and, and, and submit their, their information to get uh, percentages here. So really good stuff. So what have you learned? What have you learned so far? Well, you've learned how to uh, work with forms and input, how to listen uh, by doing a get element by ID, excuse me, not listen, but how to retrieve by doing get element by ID. And you're retrieving the field itself, and you've now made a link, a, an invisible link to your HTML. So this num field one is directly tied into this num field one right here, this input. So you know how to retrieve those, you know how to get the values, how to set the values. If you're working with non input values like paragraphs, or if you're working with headers like we did in our case, uh, you're still going to grab it the same way with get element by ID, but you're instead going to use inner text, okay, which is really cool. You're going to set your own inner text, which I think is, is pretty dang awesome. And then um, you've also learned how to add event listeners. So on our form, we've added an event listener for submit, okay. Uh, you, there's others that you can add, uh, or we could have worked with a button and done an on-click listener where we actually um, call a function when the button is pressed. We chose to work with forms. And again, you should look that up on Google. What's the difference between input, uh, input submit type, and button uh, in HTML? And you'll find a bunch of articles. And then you've learned how to do some error handling. You've learned how to, hey, these fields are empty. Let's send an alert to the user. Uh, you've also learned how to uh, parse the float. So to take a string and turn it into a number that we can actually work with, we chose a float so it doesn't get rid of the decimals. And then we actually did the math operation itself right here. We set the text and then we turned off the default behavior for forms, which is to refresh your web page because we don't want to refresh it because there's data that we need to show to the user. Okay. And uh, lots of cool stuff that you've learned. And uh, what you're going to do in the subsequent exercise is you're actually going to build uh, you, the the remaining percentage calculators using similar methods here. So really good stuff. Congratulations. Uh, that's it for this uh, small section here. Mark Price at devslopes.com. See you next time. <laughs>